Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's your favorite history teacher back at again with another historical video. And today we start a new unit, uh, the rise of totalitarianism, the rise in totalitarianism, whichever way you want to put it. We're going to talk about the big three dictators um, across the world and Talk a little bit about voice crack. My golly gee. <clears throat> there we go. Much better. Let's let's just get into it. I'm I'm tired of hearing my voice crack. Let's share the screen. Okay, new unit, title page. Rise of totalitarianism. <clears throat> Ooh, I got water over here. Got water. I got water. There we go. Much better. Rise of totalitarianism, unit six. Remember, we talked about totalitarianism. And in the first unit, um, unit zero. So this is unit six. <clears throat> so chapter 10, put this at the top of your margin. Next page. The West Between the Wars is chapter 10. And then today, we're going to look at instability after World War I, chapter 10, lesson one. So let's get into it. Uh, objectives, we're going to identify the effects of the Great Depression on government and politics and describe the art, literature, and scientific breakthroughs produced after World War I. That was your warm-up. All right, unease in the West. From the beginning, the peace settlement at the end of World War I left nations unhappy. President Woodrow Wilson had realized that a peace settlement included provisions that could serve as a new cause for conflict. He had placed many of his hopes for the future uh, in the League of Nations, but this organization was not very effective in maintaining the peace. One problem was the failure of the U.S. to join the League. Test question. The U.S. did not join. Many Americans were isolationists isolationists why is it not there oh no i need to change it that's isolationists keyword they don't want to get involved in the war uh the u.s senate in spite of woodrow wilson's ww woodrow wilson's wishes ww he refused. They refused to ratify the Treaty of Versailles. It meant that the U.S. could not join the League of Nations (LON). Without the U.S., the League of Nations' effectiveness was weakened between 1919 and 1924. Desire for security led the French government to demand strict enforcement of the Treaty of Versailles. This tough policy began with the issue of reparations that Germans were supposed to make for the damage they had done in the war. April 21st, the Allied Reparations Committee (ARC). Determined that Germany owed over 132 billion marks, which is $33 billion. And for reparations payable, an annual settlement of about 2.5 billion marks a year. The new German Republic made the first payment in 1921, and one year later, the German government faced the financial crisis and announced it can no longer pay any more reparations. Outraged, the French troops, sent, uh, French troops were sent to occupy the Ruhr Valley, Germany's chief Germany's chief industrial and mining center. France planned to collect reparations from using the Ruhr mines and factories. So uh, League of Nations and America is being pulled in every other direction. League of Nations. What are you going to do about China and Japan, America, even though they're not in the League of Nations? Uh, here's reparations, Germany being... Weighed down by fifty, what is that? Fifty-five trillion, billion, fifty-five billion dollars. Uh, this is some despair. 
This is some troops in the Ruhr Valley. Now go. Um, <laughs> if you know Game of Thrones, you know that. The German government adopted a policy of passive resistance to this French occupation. The German workers there went on strike. The German government mainly paid their salaries by printing more money. But printing more money doesn't help the economy. This will only add to the inflation that had begun in Germany by the end of the war. The German mark will virtually become worthless. In 1914, 4.2 marks equaled one U.S. dollar. By the end of November 20, 1923, 4.2 trillion, trillion marks equaled one dollar. Both France and Germany began to seek a way out of this disaster. 1924, an international commission adopted a new plan of reparations. It's called the Dawes Plan, named after the American banker who chaired the commission, first to reduce reparations. It then coordinated Germany's annual payments with its ability to pay. The Dawes Plan also granted an initial $200 million loan for Germany to recover. This loan soon opened the way, opened the door to heavy American investment in Europe. A brief period of European prosperity followed. With this prosperity became new European diplomacy. The foreign ministers of Germany and France, Gustav Stresemann and Aristide Briand, fostered a spirit of cooperation. In 1925, they signed the Treaty of Locarno, which guaranteed Germany's new western borders with France and Belgium. Many views the many, many viewed the Locarno Pact as a new era, as the beginning of a new era of European peace. Three years later, the Kellogg Briand Pact brought even more hope. Sixty-five nations signed this accord and pledged to renounce war as an instrument of national policy. This should be a, a closed bracket. I didn't change that. Oops. Nothing was said what would be done with anyone who violated the pact, however. Uh, this is from Game of Thrones. Uh, this is a kid stacking marks. This is a person wallpapering marks because it's worthless. The Dawes plan, in essential, the United States lends money to Germany Germany then uses the money that is made in revenues to pay back France and Great Britain. And then France and Great Britain pay back the United States for the loans that the U.S. Uh, gave France and Great Britain during the war. Uh, that's uh, Streisman and Briand. Papa, the League of Nations. And here you have Uncle Sam talking to a new peace pact. And you have Europe looking over like, what are you doing? All right, superficial prosperity. Uh, the brief period of prosperity that began in 1924 ended in an economic collapse that became known as the Great Depression. A depression is a period of low economic activity and rising unemployment, two factors that played a major role in the start of the Depression. First was a series of downturns in the economies of individual nations in the second half of the 1920s. For example, prices like farm. Oh, my gosh. I need to proofread. Proofread. Farm products like wheat fell rapidly due to overproduction. Because people were like, I need to make more money, so I'm going to overproduce hoping that I'll make more money from all the things I have. But if you flood the market with wheat, uh, the prices are going to go down because there's so much in excess. As a result, rural consumers bought fewer goods, leading manufacturing countries to increase tariffs and international trade will decline. An increase in the use of oil and hydroelectricity led to a slump in the coal industry, the second trigger of an international financial crisis involving the U.S. stock market. Much of the European prosperity from 1924 to 1929 was built on the U.S. loans to Germany. However, during the 20s, the U.S. stock market boomed, and then in 1928, American investors pulled money out of Germany to uh, to invest in stocks. But in October 29, 1929, the U.S. stock market crashed and prices plunged. In a panic, U.S. investors withdrew more funds from Germany and other European markets. By 1931, trade was slowing and industrial production was declining. Unemployment was rising. Superficial prosperity. So this is the U.S. 
compared to other countries. And um, per capita income. So you have at almost not $8,000 and it's severely dropped to, what is that, $5,000 in a matter of years. Uh, this is a famous picture uh, taken during the Great Depression. More on that next year. Uh, Wall Street and panic has stocks crash. Notice this is a this is look at this date. It's before October 29th, 1929 is when the stock market officially crashed. And here you have it ahead of time, October 24th. All right, don't call it a comeback. Uh, financial crisis and economic depression were now were not new in Europe. The extent of the economic downturn in 1929 truly made this depression the Great Depression. During 1932, the worst year of the Great Depression, nearly one out of every four British workers were unemployed. About five and a half million Germans, roughly 30% of their labor force, had no jobs. And in most, most, in many of Germany's largest cities, the unemployed and homeless filled the streets. Governments were unsure with how to deal with the severity of this crisis. Many governments decided to raise tariffs, uh, which are taxes on imports, in a hope to generate revenue and to exclude foreign goods from home markets. But this actually worsened the crisis and created a serious uh, political effects. One effect of the economic crisis was an increased government activity in the economy. The Great Depression led to uh, the masses of people to follow political leaders who offered simple solutions to their problems in return for dictatorial powers. Everywhere in Europe, democracy seemed under threat or to be on the defense. By 1919, many European states, both major and minor, had democratic governments. In a number of states, women could vote. And many political leaders rewarded women for their contributions to the war effort by granting them voting rights. However, women could not vote until 1944 in France, 1945 in Italy, and 1971 in Switzerland. In the 1920s, maintaining these democratic governments was not that easy. Uh, dun, 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 talking about Hitler. Here's when women got the right to vote across Europe. All right. Um, Imperial Germany ended in 1918 with Germany's quote unquote defeat in the war. A German state known as the Weimar Republic emerged and this new republic implemented a government with the liberal democratic principles the weimar republic was plagued by serious economic problems though germany experienced runaway inflation 1922 1923 and it came with serious problems as families on fixed incomes watched their life savings disappear to make matters worse after a period of relative prosperity from 1924 to 1929 germany was again hit hard by the great depression in 1930 unemployment grew to three million people by march and by December, it was 4.38 million. This depression will pave the way for fear and the rise of extremist parties. Hitler. France, too, suffered fi from financial problems after the war because it had a more balanced economy. It did not begin to feel the full effects until 1932. The economic instability that it then suffered soon had political effects during a 19 month period from 1932 to 1933. Six different cabinets were formed as France faced political chaos. Finally, June 1936, the coalition of less leftist parties, communists, socialists, and radicals, formed the Popular Front government. The Popular Front started a program for workers that some have called the French New Deal, named after the New Deal in the U.S. The French New Deal gave workers the right of collective bargaining, a 40-hour work week in industry, and a minimum wage, although Britain experienced limited prosperity from 1925 to 1929. It too soon faced uh, the growing effects of the Great Depression. The Labor Party failed to solve the nation's economic problems and fell from power in 1931. A new government led by the conservatives claimed credit for bringing Britain out of the worst stages of the Great Depression by using traditional policies of balanced budgets and protective tariffs. Political leaders in Britain largely ignored the new ideas of British economist John Maynard Keynes. Keynes argued that unemployment came from a decline in demand, not from overproduction. He believed that governments could increase demand by creating jobs through deficit spending. 
i.e. going into debt if necessary. Keynes' idea is different from those who believe that depression, the depression should be left to resolve themselves without government interference. And we all know the story about that. If you don't know, I'll tell you. Uh, this is the Weimar Republic. This is the um, labor front. Here you have pictures, labor front. People thinking uh, Lenin from Moscow are helping run France because they are communist, socialists, and radicals. The old flag, the old policy, the old leader. Mates, help me get a job. And then 1935, I got the job. Help me to keep it. What a nice guy. He looks so happy. That's John Maynard Keynes. All right, an American thing, depression. Germany, after Germany, no Western nation was morally, more, morally, more affected by the Great Depression than the United States. All segments of society suffered. By 1932, U.S. industrial production fell by almost by its 1929 levels. Uh, by 1933, there were more than 12 million people unemployed. Under these conditions, Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt won the presidential election in 1932 in a landslide victory. Believing in free enterprise, Roosevelt believed capitalism must be reformed to save it, so he pursued a policy of active government and economic intervention known as the New Deal. Test question. The New Deal increased uh, programs, including an increased program of public works, the Works Progress Administration, WPA, Established 1935 was a government organization employing about 3 million people at its peak. The Works Progress Administration, I just said that. Workers built bridges, roads, post offices, and airports, hospitals, schools, all that jazz. Roosevelt administration instituted a new social legislation that began in the U.S. welfare system. 1935, the Social Security Act created a system of old age pensions that could be collected by 65 for those people no longer working. It also supplied unemployment insurance or temporary income to those workers who lost their jobs recently. This legislation also led to a small welfare payments to others in need, including those with disabilities. These reforms may have prevented a social revolution in the United States, but they did not solve the unemployment problems. In 1938, unemployment was still more than 10 million people. It was only World War II and the growth of the weapons industry will, that will bring the U.S. workers back to full employment. Thank you, World War II. Black Tuesday is the day the is given for the day the stock market crashed. Oh, that's FDR. Here's the Work Progress Administration posters. Social Security Act, which is still in existence today. More depression. $100 will buy this car. Must have cash. Lost all on the stock market. That's how far uh, it dipped. Call of Duty. World War II. Lost Generation. And last slide. With political and ec economic and social uncertainties came intellectual uncertainties that were evident in the artistic and scientific achievements of the years following World War I. The shocks of World War I had left many authors like F. Scott Fitzgerald and Pablo Picasso with an aimlessness when it was over, with a sense of aimlessness. This led to a creation of countercultural art movements that challenged established styles. With writer Gertrude Stein coined the phrase, the lost generation. Test question to describe the feeling of spiritual disorientation by felt by many artists and authors. Author Ernest Hemingway's work, The Sun Also Rises, was a central work of this lost generation. Portraying many individuals psychologically damaged by human losses of World War I. After 1918, the pre-war fascination with the absurd and unconscious content of the mind seemed even more appropriate in the light of nightmares of World War I battlefronts. The the world does not make sense, so why should art, was a common remark, and it led to a thing, art movement called Dadaism, Dadaism, and Surrealism. 
the Dadaists were artists who were obsessed with the idea that life has no purpose. They tried to express that their insanity of life in their art. A more important uh, artistic mo movement than Dadaism was surrealism by portraying the unconscious such as fantasies, dreams, and nightmares, the Surrealists sought to show the greater reality that exists beyond the physical world. One of the world's foremost Surrealist painters, Spaniard Salvador Dali, placed the recognizable objects in unrecognizable relationships, making their irrational visible. Pre-war physics revolution began by Albert Einstein continuing in the 20s and 30s. Newtonian physics had made people believe that all phenomena could be defined and predicted. 1927, German physicist Werner Heisenberg, uncertainty the uncertainty principle shook this belief. Physicists knew that atoms were made of smaller parts, so some particles, and their uh, the uncertainty principle is based on the unpre unpredictable behavior of these subatomic particles. Heisenberg's theory essentially suggests that all physical laws are based on uncertainty. This theory challenged unchallenged Newtonian physics and represented a new worldview. The principle of uncertainty fit well in with other uncertainties of the interwar years. Aptly put. Uh, here are some famous books. Here's Gertrude Stein, The Great Gatsby, The Sun Also Rises. You have, this is a Salvador Dali painting. That's Heisenberg, a.k.a. Brian Cranston, Breaking Bad. Uh, this is Heisenberg. This guy, he's Heisenberg. That's a, a young Albert Einstein. And that's going to do it. Uh, I know I talked really fast, um, because, you know, that's what I want to do. Get it over with. Uh, just like you guys want to take these notes. So that's going to conclude this lecture. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys did enjoy that. Your homework is page 370, two through four. 372 through 4. So, yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy that. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.